This video file is recorded in Sabanj University during the recitations for the CS201 Introduction to Computing course as it was given in the fall 2016 semester. Good morning. We are back for the seventh week and today we are going to do something different. We are going to solve some midterm samples from previous years. I know that your midterm is on Monday next week. So we just want to warm you up and tell you what you should expect in your midterm, okay? Something similar will be in your midterm. Before starting, any question of what we have seen so far? No questions? Okay, we can continue then. Uh, most of the time today I'm going to play the role of the compiler because I'm going to solve the sample codes on the board. We are going to see some codes. When you're going to see codes, we are probably going to figure out what's the output of that particular code. Otherwise, all of the time we are going to write codes from scratch. Okay, let's go with the fourth function, with the fourth uh, sample in your document. Namely, we have this code here. Okay? Maybe I can copy paste it. With it should be enough. I mean, you can see it like this. So this is your code. And your job is to figure out what's the output of this code if we know that the input is the following. So we are going to read some data, and you, the data that you're going to read are the following, 12, 15, 16, 20. These are the data that the user is going to give us an input from his keyboard or hers keyboard. <coughs> okay, so let's write them. This is the input. I don't want to scroll, that's why I'm going to write the input. So the input is going to be 12, 15, then what? 16 and 20. Okay, we're going to read X and Y, and accordingly, we're going to give those data in first in, first come order. Okay, so let's start from May. We declare two, four variables here. Basically, this is what, what we want to do. To figure out the output, what the user is going to see in the console, and also to trace, to trace uh, the variables, to trace the value of those variables, because count is going to have one value, then we're going to change it in another, in another, and so on. The same applies for x, y, and for the difference variable. We are going to change as we execute the code, and we want to trace them, meaning we want to see what kind of data, which data, what, which values each of them had in a particular slot of time. So. We have the counter, this is a variable. We have x, we have y, and we have the difference. Okay, it's with one f. Initially count is zero, that's why I write zero here. And I write this slash in order to distinguish zero from o. Then I'm reading c in x. I'm reading x, and I'm reading from this input. I mean, the first value that I'm going to give as an input is 12. So x is going to be 12. Please pay attention because this is very important to understand, okay? Probably you'll have at least one example that you, are, you should figure out its output in the exam. Okay, so x, we just read x is 12. Now there's something interesting that I want to tell you. Do while apart from the code. We saw what's while do, while, what while is doing. So we have while, we have a condition here, and while this condition is true, we keep executing the code, okay? When it's false, we just skip that block of the code. But there is another very similar Basically, you can consider it the same, but not exactly the same. Another loop, which is also while, and it goes like this. Do, 
while and you have the condition here. Do you know what's the difference between two? Or are they exactly the same or not? Do you have an idea about that? Maybe we can figure it out. Yeah, we saw this last week. But what is this doing is the following. It says, this guy says, well, this is true, do this. But this guy says, do this, well, this is true. So, no matter whether the condition is true or false, at least this code is going to be executed once. Okay? We execute it once, and then we check. If this while, if the condition of the while is true, then we go to the beginning. If this is true, we go to the beginning. But initially, we, so we have executed these codes up until here, then we execute this block, no matter whether the condition is true or false. At least once we execute it, but if the condition is true, we keep executing again and again in a loop this block up until this condition is true. And this was not the case with this while, because initially we check the condition. If the condition is false, initially, at the first try, we don't execute at all this block, okay? So this is the difference that this do while block is going to be executed at least once, okay? Now let's go with this do while block. So this is the while block, this is the condition for that while, okay? We go inside. We are reading y, and we read 15. Okay. Just let's... Okay, it can stay. We are reading 15. We are finding the difference. It's y minus x. So, difference is 15 minus 12. Difference is 3. Then we're checking. If the difference is greater than 1, is this true? Let's see. So, 3 is the difference. Is 3 greater than 1? Yes, it is. So that's where we go. And we are executing another while. So this, these are, those are called nested whiles, while inside a while. So while this condition is true, so this is not do while, this is while, we keep executing those two commands. Let's see whether it's true. So difference is greater than one, three is greater than one, yes. We go inside, we execute this while. We have a condition here. While x plus one is smaller than y. Let's see what's the value of x. x is 12, plus one, 30. Is 13 smaller than 15? Yes, it is. That's why we go inside. Plus plus x, we increment x by 1. This is, this is what plus plus x means. So if x was 12, now it's going to be 13. This is the new value. This is called tracing. And we are printing this on the console. That number is equal to number is equal to, we are printing x, and the value of x is 30. Okay. End line, we go to a new line. Then since we're dealing with this while, we're not done yet, we're checking the condition. Okay, once it was true. Now again, x plus y is smaller than, x plus 1 is smaller than y. 13 plus 1, 14. Is 14 smaller than y, than 15? Yes, it is. That's why we go inside. We increment x by 1, so x is going to be 14. And now we print this stuff at the console. So number is equal to, we're printing x, and x for the time being is 14. If you don't understand anything, please stop me and ask me, okay? It's important to follow me. Now again, we're checking this while loop x plus 1, x is 14, plus 1, 15. Is 15 smaller than 15, since y is? No, it's not. That's why we skip this block. We go here, and we say x is equal to y. Let's see what's y. y is 15. So x is going to be 15 now. Okay? Then we are incrementing the counter by 1. Okay? Plus, plus counter counter is 0 for the time being, we increment it by 1, it becomes 1. Now we go to this while block here, okay? So up until now we dealt with this do block. Now we are checking the condition. So this do block at least is executed once. And then we are now checking the condition. If this is true, we go to the beginning. So counter is not equal to 3. 
What's the value of counter? It's 1. 1 is not equal to 3. Is this true? Yes, it's true. We go here. We read another variable. I mean, we read, we read y again. So the value of y, so this is with the following input. So y is now 16. We are finding the new difference between y and x. So difference is y minus x. 16 minus 15, it's 3. So the difference is 16 minus 15, it's 1. So the difference is 1. We don't have the 3 value anymore. We are asking if 1 is greater than 1 now. Is this true? No. That's why this while loop is not going to be executed even. I mean, it's even not going to be checked, the condition of the while. So this if will not let it to happen. Now we say x is equal to y. Okay, so this guy becomes 16. Yep. We are incrementing the counter. From 1, counter is now 2. 2, we are finished with the do block. Now we are checking the condition. The counter is not equal to 3. 2 is not equal to 3. Yes, this is true. 2 is not equal to 3. We go in the beginning. We read y. The following value that we are going to read is 20. So y is going to be 20. This will be given from the user. Okay. Now the difference is y minus x. 20 minus 16, it's 4. We are checking. If the difference is greater than 1, 4 is greater than 1. Yes, this is true. So we go and check the while loop. x plus 1 is smaller than y. x is 16. 16 plus 1 is 17. Is 17 smaller than 20? And y is 20? Yes, it is. That's why we go inside. We increment x by 1. So x is now going to be 17. And we print this at the console. So number is equal to what's the value of x now? 17. We go to a new line. We check while again. x plus 1 is smaller than y. 17 plus 1 is 18. Is 18 smaller than 20? Yes, it is. We go inside. We increment x by 1, so x is now 18. We are printing this 18 at the console. Again, number is equal to 18. Again, we check the while loop. x plus 1 is smaller than y. 18 plus 1, it's 19. This is smaller than 20, yes. 19 is smaller than 20. We go inside. We increment x. So x is now 19. We print the number at the console, so number is equal to 19. We go up and check the loop again. 19 plus 1, 20. Is 20 smaller than 20? Why is 20? No, it's not. That's why we are not going to execute this loop again. We go, just write x is equal to y meaning that the value of x is now 20. x is equal to y. We increment the counter by 1. So the counter from 2 is going to be 3. And we are checking the while loop now. Why counter is not equal to 3. 3 is not equal to 3. This is false. So we are finished with the program. This is the trace. Okay. Trace meaning not only the last values, but all the values that the, all of the variables had during the execution of the program. And this is the output. Output meaning what did the program print at the console. Okay? Is this clear? Questions? Yeah? Why does it do one, four, five, and five times? Why doesn't it loop? Yes, because uh, we, uh, the call says the counter is not equal to 3. Yes. It 
Yeah, yeah, but we are checking at the moment when we are asking whether it's true or not. Yeah, it might be afterwards, but it's, I mean, we're checking at the very moment that we are asking. So at the moment we're asking three is not equal to three. Is this true? It's not true, it's false. That's why when this is not false, this is the syntax, this is how while works, we are going outside of the block and continue, okay? I mean, yeah, I probably understood it. Uh, but that's why I would urge you to do it yourself at your home, okay? Because you think, yeah, it's easy. But at the exams, probably you will get confused and, you know, emotions, whatever. Try to solve it at your home, okay? You're going to do it like this. Probably it will take you, like, not more than 10 minutes. Okay, let's say 15. Even if it takes 20 minutes to you, it should be okay for the time that you'll have at your exam. Any question about this stuff? Pay attention. While and do while are not the same. Again, do while at least this block is executed at least once. Okay? With while, it might not be executed at all. If the condition initially at the first try is false. So no questions. Okay. This is an important example. So you will have the solutions probably. Now let's go with another example, similar one. If you don't trust me, you can do something like this. I know that's it. Do you trust me or not? Yeah? <laughs> okay. If you don't trust me, and I know that you trust me, just joking. You can just copy paste this piece of code and you can trace your program at the output. At the, I mean, you can write the program. Okay. And you can use what in order to trace it? You remember debugging stuff? Breaking points and step into, step over? For your case, step over should be okay in order to go line by line and check the values of each variable, okay? So, you might do something like this. Add new item, let it be the source. Okay, so you can use tracing. You can run the program and you can just go with uh, debug. Debug step over, okay, in order to go step by step. So you see the value of the counter. I mean, initially we don't have any values. Now the counter is going to be zero. You see it's changed and debug, we should give an input, and the input that we gave now is 12. Yeah, it's 12. Okay, so you see that x is 12 now. Debug, step over. Now we are giving y. The value of y initially was 15. <coughs> Just let me enlarge the font. Okay, so the value of y is 15 now. I just enter that value. And you can see that y is now 15. And we are finding the difference here. Debug, step over. The difference is 3. 15 minus 12 is 3. We are checking if this difference and so on. I mean, you can, if you're not sure, you can just use step over, step over, step over, so you can go and see the steps that we just covered. Okay. We are not going to do it right now. You can do it yourself. We have seen debugging. I have played many times the role of the compiler. Now let's go with this particular example, which is similar, even easier than the previous one. What do we have here? We declare here three prototype functions, A, B, and C, meaning that we are telling to the compiler, please, if I'm going to use somewhere in main the function A or B or C, don't say that it is a mistake because I'm going to define them I'm going to write them afterwards, okay? Because usually the functions should be written before main. Before they are used, we should define them. With this prototype function, 
returning to the compiler that we are going to do it later on because we want to focus on the main program, not on the functions themselves. Okay, so these are called prototype, five, prototype functions. They have the name and the parameters that they take and they should work when we are called them that we are calling with the same name and the parameter, the same type of the parameter. So this is main. We declare some variables here. We are calling the functions and we want to see the output, not the trace. I mean, previously, we wanted to trace and display the output. But here we are looking only for the output, not the trace. I mean, we don't care about the, var the variables changing their values. But of course, if you find the trace also, it won't be a mistake. So even though we are not looking for the trace here, I'm going to do it also. It's trivial, I would say. It's easy. So let's continue with the fifth example from your document. We want to see the output. We are also going to check the trace. You don't have any while loop here, do while or whatever. Okay. Just let's see what are the functions A, B, and C doing. This is A, it takes an integer as a parameter, prints A, and returns this parameter incremented by one, nothing else. What is B doing? Takes a character, C, prints it, and returns seven. But you know, this seven is going to be returned as a float, so it's going to be 7.0. And C, just prints C and returns nothing, that's why its return type is void. Now well, let's go with the function. Maybe we can do it like this, so we can have more space to see all of functions. Okay, we start with main. We don't have these inputs right here in this program. We are starting with main. We declare three variables. One of them is called p. I'm going to trace them, that's why I'm not going to write boxes. The other one is q. And the third one is r. p is an integer. Initially, its value is 0. q is a float, a decimal number. It's 0, 0.0 initially. And we have a character, d. r is a char. OK. Now we are here. We should execute the th fourth command from main. p is equal to we are calling the function a of p. Let's see, a takes an integer. This integer is going to be p. So we are calling this function. Let's write it here. So this is main. Now we are calling a with i. And i has a box, meaning we have reserved memory for that. This i is going to be p, because we send p as a parameter. So i is 0. When we call the function a, we print a. So a is going to be printed. We go to a new line, and we return i plus 1. So i is 0, plus 1. It's going to be uh, 1. When we return it, so we are back here. Instead of this a of p, the return value will be here. So p is going to be 1. The return value is 1, so p is going to be 1 in main. It's not 0 anymore. OK. Now let's go with the second, with the second function. So we are q is equal to b of r. But first, let's ex execute b of r. Let's see what b is doing. b is taking a character. Of course, when the function finishes, so when a finished here, when it returns 0 plus 1, 1, everything associated with a was also erased. OK? We don't have anything in memory. Now we are calling b. So we are here. Before assigning the value to q, we should evaluate b. We should call b. So this is a function b. It has r 
and R is a character. In this case, we are sending no, C. R is known as C in D. In this case, in our case, we are sending R, and R is known as C inside B. So the value of C is going to be D. Okay. In B, we print B, letter B, capital B. We go to a new line. We go to a new line, and we return 7. But 7 is an integer. Here we expect a float, okay? That's why this 7 is going to be 7.0, okay? So, we are returning 7.0, and we are going back here. Here we have 7.0, and this 7.0 is going to be assigned to Q, and Q is float, by the way. So Q is not 0, 0.0, it's 7.0. And everything that is associated with B is going to be erased from memory. We don't have it anymore. Now, we go with this comment. We don't... I mean, we are calling C or B of R. So what do you think? Which one is going to be executed first, C or B? B, of course. <laughs> we are calling C, and C takes... You see here, C takes an x, a variable x, which is of type float. So c takes x, but the value of x is going to be the value that is going to be returned from b of r. So this c, for starting, main calls c, and c calls b, b of r, okay? R is a character, by the way. Uh, B of R. And this R is going to be known as C inside B. Same as we saw previously. So the value of C is going to be D. Okay, so we call B. This C is D, character D. We're going to print this B. So we are printing B again. We go to a new line. We are returning 7, which is 7.0. So we are returning 7.0. And this 7.0 is going to be here. I mean, B of R returns 7.0. And this 7.0 is going to be a parameter for C, meaning it's going to be this float x here. Okay. So everything associated with B is going to be erased. X is 7.0. We took it from B. Now let's see what C is doing. C is just printing C, nothing else. And it isn't returning any value. That's why at the console we print the C. We go to a new line because of the end line. Now let's go here. Okay. Now we should execute this command also. This is the last command we are going to execute before return zero. Again, we are calling p is equal to a of a of p, which is going to be executed first. This one here. It's just like mathematical formulas, you know, <laughs> mathematical expressions. Those that are in parentheses, inside the parentheses, are going to be executed first. So we call A of P first. This A of P is going to return a, a value, which is, will be a parameter of this A here. And this A here is going to return a value which will be assigned to P. This is how the compiler works. So let's see what's A of P doing. The value of P, by the way, is 1. The last value that we assign to P is 1. So when the function C finished, everything associated with it was also erased from the memory. Now we are calling A of P. A takes what? An integer. I. This I is the P that we are sending, and P is 1. 
okay. We are printing, so we call this function, this p is this i, and value of p is 1. We have 1 there. We are printing this a, we are going to a new line, so we print a. We go to a new line, and we return i plus 1, meaning we return 1 and 1 is 2. We return 2, so 2 is going to be returned. And these two will be here, okay? So now we are calling A with parameter two. Previous A was erased, now we have another A. That should, it's another instance of a function. It's the same function, but another instance. And it's another instance because now A has value two, okay? Now let's see what we are doing. We are printing A again. We go to a new line and we return 2 plus 1 is 3. So we return 3 and this 3 will be here. And this 3 is going to be assigned to P. So P has a value of 3 and everything associated with A is Erase from memory. Now we go to the next line. We are finished basically, okay? Although you are, were not asked to do the tracing stuff, this stuff here, you were asked only to write the output, this stuff here, but I just show you in case that you need both of them. Yeah. Maybe you can do both of them. The output is really easy because when you, yeah, whenever exactly. you see C, you can just hide in one letter. Exactly. The output is easy, tracing is it's harder than the output, but I think that you should expect tracing also in your midterm. That's why in both of the examples I gave the tracing and the output, okay? The problem here, I mean, the, what's the point of this program, of this example, is to show how the functions work. That there is a function which calls another function which calls another function, okay? The function that is called the last is going to be executed first, then the other one, then the other one, okay? So we have main, and main is calling C, and C is calling B, okay? So B is going to be executed first, then C is going to be executed, then main, okay? So this is the order of execution. These are called nested functions, function after functions. Any question? Okay. Yeah? Uh, we need to uh, look at the return functions to uh, write the output, because uh, we didn't make trace doesn't want us. Yeah, doesn't want us. So if the question doesn't ask from you to do tracing, you don't have to do it. If you do it, better. If you have time, do it. But expecting the in, in the midterm to have a question with traces, okay? Uh, the other other functions other than me. Yeah. Shouldn't they be identified before the main function. Yeah, and they are identified before main. This is, oh, okay. okay, I explained it like two minutes. In the beginning, yeah. These are prototype functions. We just say to the compiler, yeah, you're going to use A, B, and C. Please don't say it's a mistake because I'm going to write them after the main, okay? Questions? Okay, now we are going to solve the 20th example. I'll give you like five minutes to solve it yourself. I'm just, I'm going to give you a clue what it is about. You know what's a, what a palindrome is? Have you heard about palindrome? Yes or no? And in Turkish, how do you call palindrome? Is there any other name than palindrome in Turkish? Because in my mother tongue, it's also called a palindrome. So for the guys that don't know, a palindrome is a word, a string, that is read in the same manner, starting from, right, from left to right and from right to left. For instance, if we have something like this, this is A, A, B, B, A. When we read it from left to right, it's A, B, 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 A, okay? When we read it from right to left, it's again A, B, 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 A. Or, I'm going to try the Turkish word.
Adan Ada, Adan Ada. Okay, so this is a palindrome. Both of them are palindromes. Your job here is to write a function that is going to find the palindromes. And you're going to print whether it's a palindrome or not. Okay? But uh, you should write a function, meaning you don't have to write the whole program. The whole program you start with include IO stream, using namespace, integer main, blah, blah, blah. When you're asking from you to write a function, you should write only a function that is going to be, let's say, true. If, and you take a parameter, a string as a parameter, and it's going to return true if that string is a palindrome or false if that string is not a palindrome. Okay? So, for instance, you can write something like this bool. Okay? The name of the function might be check. And you tra take the string s as a parameter. And you return either true if this is a palindrome or false if it's not a palindrome. Well, this is a function, not a program, only a function. Can you do it? I'll give you like 10 minutes to do it yourself. But let me give you a clue first, okay? Just two more minutes. So, let's go with this example. How many characters do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the length of this guy is equal to seven. Now, the index of this character is zero. And what's the index of the last character? The length? Six. Six, yeah. Okay. The index of this letter here is one. And of this letter here is five. Now let's check this letter here. This is three. And this letter here is four. One, yeah, it's two. Okay. What you should check is the following. Whether this, the first letter from the left, is equal to the first letter from the right. Meaning, the letter with index 0, is it equal to letter with index 6? The letter with index 1, is it equal with the letter of index 5? The letter with index 2, is it equal to the letter with index 4? You see? Going from the left to right, the indexes are increasing, and from the right to left, they are decreasing. So can we come out with a formula for this stuff? What do you think? I mean, if we know that this is index 0, and we know that the length is 7 in this instance, it might be another number. Can we come out with a formula that is going to link the first index with the last one, the second index, the last from the end, and so on. With the second from the end, and so on. Exactly, the sum index is okay. Sum zero, and this is six. One plus five is six. Two plus four is six. Very nice. If you know the index of the character from the left, what is going to be the index from the character from the right? From the right end? Exactly. So this is going to be, uh, I mean, index minus the current character. Index of the last one minus the current character. Index of the last one minus. So, so right. what's the link? Of the 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 index of the last one. You start from the last one and say it's the six. You take six and you say. Yeah, but six. What if the length is length is thirty? Yeah, you're very close to the solution. So the index of the last one is how much? Six. Try to associate it with the length. Six. I mean, if minus length minus one, yeah. This is always length minus one. OK, this guy is going to be length minus two. OK, this is length minus three. Now, you know, can you associate? If I have zero and this one, how I'm going to compare those two? Going out to ask, like an if statement, whether or not the 
No, no, I mean, if, I, if you know the index from the left is i, how are you going to find the index from the right, corresponding index from the right? Length minus 1 minus i or minus index. So this is the formula, okay? You have five minutes to do it. If you don't trust me, so index, the first letter has index zero. Let's say the length in our case is seven. Seven minus one, six. Minus zero, it's six again. For index one, we have length minus one, minus one. It's going to be seven minus one, six minus one, five. This is five, okay? For two, you're going to have four and so on. So this is the formula that you're going to use. Also, when we are going to check the string, should we go from the beginning till the end? Or what? To check? What? End from the end to the beginning. End from the beginning. You, you start from this end and you go to up until the beginning? Yeah. I mean, okay, you compare A and A, it's okay. D and D, okay. okay. A and A, it's okay. And, and. Then again, A and A, D and D, A and A. Should you, should you go check all of them? I mean, we already compared those guys. A and A, the second and the fourth one. Why should we compare it again? D and D. We, we, we saw that they are the same. So, up until which character? I mean, it's not a mistake. It's not a logical <laughs> mistake. But should we go from the beginning to the end or? Till, till where? Till, till the middle, of course. I mean, you should check those guys. If they if the corresponding indexes are the same, this is it. It's a palindrome. You don't have to go again and check this A and this A, this D and this D. Exactly. This is it. So you have the program. You have five minutes to write it. Questions? Yeah. Yeah, we have a break. We'll be, after, we'll be here after ten minutes.